What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a very special routine for all my beloved calisthenics athletes with three major intentions. First, we're gonna be helping our body recover by increasing blood flow and improving overall mobility. Second, stretching the lats, chest and shoulders, which tend to get extremely tight by doing tons of pull-ups and dips. And last but not least, improve mobility for calisthenics skills by conditioning our wrist, stretching the hip flexors for planche and front lever, improving shoulder flexion for handstands, hamstring flexibility for handstand presses and V-seat, and hip and spine mobility for various handstand shapes and transitions. I'll be providing modifications for all the exercises so it's adaptable to all fitness level. The only thing that you're gonna be needing is the wall and you can do this routine on a daily basis. That's it, it's practice time, let's go. For our family, we're gonna begin standing. We're gonna be simply be bouncing in place. Start very soft. And as you start bringing some body heat into your body, you can begin to bounce a little more, maybe two feet at the same time. Start shaking your arms, your wrist. Allow yourself to go. And again, right now, focus on your breath and take it slow, build it slow. If you're doing this in the morning, especially, take it very slow. If you're doing this in the afternoon, you can allow yourself to bounce a little more. Five more seconds. And stillness. Place both feet on the floor or on the mat. Bring both hands overhead. Clasp your hands on top of you. We're gonna side bend towards the left really opening into the right side body, send it up and up and back towards the sky, opening the chest back and reaching the arms as far to the left as you possibly can and just breathe. If this is too intense, you can bring one hand down and support yourself or even get this hand behind your head it will reduce the intensity of the stretch. Inhale back up, reverse to the other side. Try not to collapse, collapse in this motion, but allow your chest to fully open up, maybe even look up. Here we're opening the lats as well as the obliques to get those nice handstand flags, those handstand shapes. And inhale back to center. Now let's lower down into a squat. If you don't have a squat, you can simply be on your tiptoes and eventually get the heels towards the ground or just put something beneath your heels to elevate and reduce the amount of ankle mobility that you need. From here, simply move side to side, start, me, start warming up into the hips. Allow one knee to go forward. Doesn't have to touch, but if, if it touches, it's fine. Then bring it to the outside, left, to the outside, you can use your hands for assistance or you can work more actively. Throughout the entire routine, you might choose to do some stretches a bit more active, focusing more on the strength aspect and the mobility aspect of it, and other stretches or the same stretch in another day, doing it more passively, more relaxed. Listen to your body, take it easy or take it hard, depending on how you're feeling today. Now, I want you to grab the left wrist, find the little separation between the forearm and the wrist, press it with the index finger and the thumb, and create little circles to the right, warming up into the wrist, to the left. Switch it over towards the right, index finger of the left and thumb of the left, presses, and then you do little circles. Reverse the motion. And you give a little shake to the wrist. Now let's face, well, I'm gonna be facing forward. Start in a quadruped position. We're gonna keep warming up into the wrist as well as increasing mobility in the wrist, especially in wrist extension, which is this motion right here. This is gonna benefit you if you're training for towards the planche, if you are doing a lot of handstands, or if especially if you're doing handstand presses, we require a lot of wrist extension to be able to press back up. So start shifting the weight forward, arms fully straight until you feel it a bit and then simply go back. We're gonna go for 10 reps and every time I want you to go 
a little bit more forward. That is for two. Let's go for eight more of those. Shift forward and back. Shift forward. And as you go back, it might be useful to press with your fingers, creating some strength with finger flexion. Go back, five more, five, four, three, two. Last one, I want you to hold. Now, if you want something more intense in any given day, you can simply go on plank and really shift the weight forward. Don't force it, don't push it, listen to your body but you would want to increase the mobility of your wrist over time and increase that wrist extension. If it's too much, simply shift back a bit. Take a little break, set your knees down, give a little shake, another shake to the wrist. Now put the fingers facing you. The wrist is still, is now in flexion. Rotate the elbow slightly back and send the weight backwards. You're gonna feel the stretch right here on your forearms. I'm gonna hold this for about 15 seconds. If you want a little more, simply bring the hands forward. If you want a little less, bring the hands back. Slowly release. We're going back into extension, but now the fingers are facing towards us. We shift back we feel we first feel the stretch right here on the forms but then i want you to allow the palms to lift so we get it even deeper into the finger extensors and then release give her a shake another shake to the wrist now let's Go back to quadruped position. We're gonna start warming up and mobilizing the scapula into retraction and protraction. So scapula push-ups, which is bringing the shoulders back together and then protracting, keeping the shoulders always down, never shrugging in. If you're more advanced or if you're doing this routine over and over and you wanna take a step further, you can do it on plank. I'm gonna be demonstrated on quadruped. I'm gonna go for 10 really controlled reps. So from here, Retract, shoulder blades together, shoulders back. Protract, that's one. Let's go for nine more. Two. Three. Four, arms fully straight the entire time. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, hold at the top, make sure your spine is not rounded like a cat. We have a neutral spine with a strong protraction, a strong depression, which is really gonna transfer for the plank. And again, if you want a little more, you can go on plank. We're gonna hold in this for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Another shake to the wrist. I feel like shaking my wrist every time I place them in a plank or any bare hand bearing position. Now bring both of your hands forward. We're gonna be start to opening up into the shoulder, especially shoulder flexion for our handstands. Start on your fingertips and begin to walk the knees back. So ideally the hips are right over the knees. From here, I want you to sink down, taking a deep inhale opening the shoulders as well as the spine. And then I want you to exhale and round the spine, engage the abs and press the ground away. Then inhale, relax one more time. Let's go for five of those. So exhale, contract. Inhale, relax. Exhale, contract. Inhale, relax. Exhale, contract. Inhale, relax. Last one, push the ground away. Exhale, relax, and let's hold here. Move side to side, make sure you're not internally rotating the, the shoulders, but you are externally rotating the shoulders, so away from the ears in this case. 
If you want a little more, you can also place the hands and you can even put the shin down over time. Don't force anything, listen to your body. Slowly begin to walk the hands towards your knees or the knees towards your hands. Place both hands shoulder width and lift your hips up and back for downward facing dog. If your hamstrings are really tight today, you can begin to pedal out your feet, stretching one hamstring at a time. The heel doesn't have to touch, but it is our intention in order to open the hamstrings. Now, whenever you're done pedaling out, you can st still be here on your toes if that's where you are right now or try to get the heels down. In whichever position you are, I want you to shift the weight towards the right, really feeling the stretch on the left side body, the left lat. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Switch it over towards the left and open the right side body. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Now begin to walk the feet towards your hands. You can bend your tiptoes or you can start bending your knees if the hamstring flexibility doesn't allow you or eventually have your legs fully, fully straight. Bring the feet shoulder width for better stability. Grab both elbows and simply relax down. Again, you can have a small micro bend on the knees or you can lock them out, whichever feels good for you today and simply rock side to side, opening up into the hamstrings a bit. The more flexible your hamstrings are, the easier the hands and press will be. So spend some time here. After you're done bouncing, you can simply relax into the stretch. And your hands doesn't have to touch the floor. They can be on your shin. You can be right here. You can also place them on top of some blocks to reduce the range of motion. Allow the neck to relax as well. It's a hamstring stretch, but it's also a full posterior chain stretch or low back and our on entire spine is in a stretch, including our cervical spine. Slowly roll one vertebra at a time and go all the way up. <laughs> Feels like I'm doing a super workout today. We're gonna be working now on hip mobility. We're gonna do a horse stance. So go pretty, pretty wide, feet about 45 degree angle facing to the outside. And I'm gonna give you two options. Depending on the day and how you're feeling it, you can either be active here. We're gonna be holding this for around 30 seconds, really improving active mobility, especially for middle split. But if you're feeling tired today and you don't wanna be holding that position with tension, you just wanna relax today, simply place your hands on your knees and hold right here. Whichever of the two positions you are, we begin in three, two, one, and we hold for around 30 seconds. Make sure the knees are pushing to the outside, trying to feel the glute medius activating. Small and zero pelvic tilt will, will create more space to go deeper. And also shifting the hips slightly back. 10 more seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax. Bring your hands down. Let's go now down into the floor. We're gonna go into a pancake stretch. Keep opening now into the hips, but as well now into the hamstrings. A pancake stretch is super, super important if you're working towards the stalder press, if you're just improving your straddle in your handstand, and overall, an amazing mobility exercise that most calisthenics athletes need. We're gonna be doing a couple things here. The first one, I just simply want you to explore the position. First is that if you cannot sit with a 90 degree back, like if you're rounding back, I recommend that you place a block beneath your butt to simply elevate your butt and allow you to have a flatter back. From here, I want you to send the chest forward. Don't round too much. And if here you feel it right here, just stay there and breathe. 
If you need a little more, you can always start walking forward, keeping the back as flat as possible. Not that rounding is bad, bad but we're not doing that at this moment. Now I want you to slowly walk the hands towards the left, keeping your back as flat as possible. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Now keep the rotation. We're going to place the right hand on the mat or on the floor. Bring the left hand behind your head and we're going to side bend towards the right, opening up the left side body. That's what I want you to keep the rotation so you don't end up right here. We want to send the chest up towards the sky. We're going to be holding this for 30 seconds, so a couple options. You can stay right here. You can also place the hand right here if, if this is too much. Or second, third option would be reaching for that foot. If you're super flexible, you can try to grab the foot, but again, not necessary. Don't force the body, especially if you are right here. I'd rather you are here than you are collapsing inwards. But if you are able to open the chest and grab the foot, Hold it there, already 15 seconds in, so 50 more seconds. Inhale back to center. Let's repeat now that on the other side. So rotate towards the right with the torso first. Begin to walk the hands forward. Hold it for five, four, Three, two, one. Now place the left hand on the mat, right hand behind your head, side bend towards the left, opening the right side body. Imagine the right elbow is really pointing towards the sky. Feel the stretch on the quadratus lumborus on the back, as well as on the lats right here. And again, if you feel ready, or if, you, if you've done this routine long enough, eventually you'll be able to get to find the foot. Found it. Hold it for 50 more seconds. Slowly come back up. Now let's explore the pancake stretch a little bit deeper. So if you were right here, now I'm gonna allow you to round, but don't round back. Go as far as you can go with your back flat. If this is as much as you can go, from here you can begin to relax and round, and maybe just stay right here. We're gonna be here for around 30 seconds to a minute, so find a comfortable place that is uncomfortably comfortable, that you can stay, and your body is slowly opening up. You don't wanna force anything, you wanna have a conversation with your body, your body will tell you, okay, I'm ready, and then you move on, they stay a step deeper. But if you try to force it, you're going to be sending pain signals to your body, your body's going to contract, and it's not going to be opening up for you. 20 more seconds in whichever place you are. come back up. Now let's revert the, mo revert the motion. We just uh, open the hamstrings and the inner hips and we, do, we did a lot of compression which is beneficial again for handstand presses and for visit. Now we're gonna open the hip flexors in the opposite motion. You're gonna need a wall or you might not. The first variation is actually without the wall. It's a simple lunge and if you feel it right here on the hip flexors, or if it's hard for you to even grab the foot behind you, I want you to simply stay here. This should be enough. But if you're with me, I want you to slowly work your knee towards the wall. The closer the knees to the wall, the harder this stretch is going to be. So you might start with around a hand distance from the wall and your feet in a flex position. And I want you to shift back. You should really feel it on your quads. If you don't feel it, you're gonna get the knee closer to the wall. And you're gonna point the feet and now you should really, really feel it on your quad. Maybe grab the wall for stability. 
and simply shift the weight back. You should feel it right here on your quad. Let's hold it for 20 seconds. Once again, bring the attention to your breathing. Now shift the weight forward. Before you do, don't arch, try not to arch. Keep a posterior pelvic tilt by engaging especially the back glute and shift forward. Now we switch from the quads mostly to the iliopsoas complex, which is the main hip flexor muscle. You can be right here or you can allow your hands to relax. 20 seconds. To switch it up, place both hands on the mat, bring the knee back to the same distance of the wall that you did for the other side, place the right foot forward and repeat by sending the weight of your torso back with a, a tall and proud posture. You should feel it on your quad. Now create that posterior pelvic tilt, shift the weight forward and hold it for 20 seconds. If your knee is bothering, which in my case is actually bothering me, you can place something soft, maybe like the mat should be behind, just to get some cushion on your knee. But ideally, you don't want to be placing your kneecap on the floor. You want to be placing the top, the end part of your quad. If you place the knee cap, it's going to be even more painful than placing the quad. And dangerous. And release. Get out of the position however you like. <laughs> now we're going to be staying closer to the wall. We're going to be open, opening a little bit the chest, which again tends to get really, really tight with a lot of push-ups and a lot of dips and limiting in chest mobility, which will also prevent you from reaching overhead for the handstand as well. I want you to get close to the wall, facing sideways to the wall. Now, the closer you are to the wall, the harder this stretch or the, more, the most intense this stretch is going to be. So start maybe far away. You're gonna place the right hand on the wall. You're gonna simply twist towards the left. You should feel the stretch on your chest. If you don't feel it, Get as close to the wall as possible and bring the hand behind to really feel it a little bit more. When I be holding this for around 20 seconds each side. Slowly release. Now the other side, I'm gonna give you my back. Again, if you want deeper, simply get closer to the wall and bring the hand behind, even all the way touching the wall. If you are, your chest flexibility is good, then you get a deeper, deeper stretch on the chest. You're also improving shoulder extension, which is going to improve your dips. If you're working towards a hefesto, which is an advanced move, this is also going to help. Korean dips, back lever many things. Five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one, and release. We're gonna be doing another one for shoulder extension and for the chest and also the front delt. We're gonna be putting it into a stretch, which again is a very overused muscle in the calisthenics world. We're gonna begin with a table tuck, so fingers facing back this time. I want you to retract the scapula first and then simply bring the hips up. You might be able to hold it here. We're gonna be holding it for 30 seconds, so let's go up with me. 
And if you want a little more, you can do this. So based on the intensity that you want to achieve today, pick your variation and let's hold it for around 30 seconds. Extend and rotate the shoulders to really open through the chest. Don't allow your hips to sink down, but keep pushing up, engage those glutes. And slow really release. Now stay there, don't move anything. Bring the heels towards you and begin to walk like a crab forward to open more into the shoulders. This might be all you need, but if you need a little bit more, you can simply keep walking with your hips or keep walking with your hands back, increasing that range of motion. Find a point where you can relax for 30 seconds. Don't force it, don't force anything. You might be able to get here, but that doesn't mean that you should be there. So find a point where it feels comfortable. And once again, depending on the day, this is a daily routine. So some days you might do it more intensely, other days you might take it easier. Slowly begin to, again, either walk the hips towards the hands or the hands towards the hips, whichever feels more natural to you. When uh, almost there, almost there, we're gonna be doing a seated forward fold. If this is too hard to sit again on a 90 degree, simply elevate your butt with a block. Take a deep inhale and exhale, fold. And again, this might be the place that you wanna be. You can also put a bunch of pillows right here so you're able to relax. We're gonna be holding this for one minute because it's our last passive, passive stretch. And I want the body to relax and allow the benefits of the practice to sink in. If you're doing this daily, you might get sore the first couple of days, but then your body is going to adapt to the movements. And as long as you don't push it too hard, too quickly, too fast, the dumps or the muscle soreness should go away and you should be able to start getting deeper and deeper every time whether that is on your shoulder flexion, on your hamstring flexibility, on your pancake stretch, on your shoulder extension stretch, on the hip flexor stretch, or on any of the movements that we did. This routine, since it's full body, will also reveal to you where you're lacking the most or where you have the most amount of limitations. If you want the handstand press and you're right here, you're really gonna have a hard time. If you want a straight line planche and your hip flexors are super, super tight, you're gonna have a hard time. If you want a straight line handstand and your shoulders are super, super close, you're gonna have a super, super difficult time to the point that not being able to be straight. So pay attention to those things and maybe sometimes don't do the full routine, but put extra effort and focus on those areas that you need the most. Enough talking, 10 seconds to relax. slowly come up. Bring the right knee towards you, cross it over the left leg, bring the left arm up and twist over towards the right. So hook the elbow to the outside of your knee and twist. back to center, switch it up, right leg in front, left leg towards you, cross it over the right, right arm up, right elbow to the outside of the left knee and twist. And slowly release. Find a comfortable seated position just to simply relax, find some stillness after your practice. Allow your eyes to close and simply scan your body for any extra tension that you might still be carrying with you. Let that go, relax, relax the shoulders, the neck, 
the jaw, the face. Allow your breathing to become slow and smooth in and out through the nose, ideally. Feel the new openness that you have created in your body and with that in your mind. As we always say, a flexible body is a flexible mind. So releasing that tension that we create in our workouts, we carry that with life and releasing that, it's gonna make our lives just go smoother and with more ease. And slowly open your eyes. I'm going to stand up to say bye to the camera. I'm sweating, I'm dying. Hopefully it wasn't that intense for you. Well, I live in Miami, but there you have it guys. This is a daily routine that you can absolutely do every single day, as long as you don't push it every single time. As you probably noticed, we did some active stuff. We also did some passive stuff. Uh, you can turn all the active work into passive on those days that you simply wanna relax, or you can turn all the passive stuff into active if you really want to build more strength and stability in those specific movement patterns. If you're looking for a calisthenics program that doesn't overlook the importance of mobility and active recovery days, check our online SM Academy and try it for seven days for free by using the code PRACTICE. With one single subscription, you get access to all our workouts and practices. And with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment down below what else we would like to see on this channel. And I will see you all next week. Much love.